gonna make the profiles boom, 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 boom. What it is, you already know what it is right here on Gunner's Profiles. As you can tell by that thumbnail, Brotherhood of the Strong. Oh, you didn't know about it? We're about to explain some shit to you guys right now in a few minutes. But in real life, um, in a manual style of direct fashion, there will be no added preservatives in this story. Just the real as I know it. Now, we all heard of the green wall. Ba -ba -da. Guard! Get up off me, right? We all heard about the green wall, um, about this mysterious clandestine group, you know, based out of, they say there's a lot of them in Tehachapi, Salinas Valley. Um, and basically, basically, it's a group um, of rogue COs, you know, that have come together for one reason or another um, for power, right? Um, I've heard a lot of stories about them. Have I necessarily seen them? I'd be lying if I say I have. Um, they're so kind, such of a clandestine group that you only hear about it, but it's something, you know, they're like Bigfoot, that's it. You know, I've seen the water, I thought I've seen footprints, but I never smelt or, or, or looked at them, right? Um, but I think he's real. What are the Harry and the Hendersons? Um, now that's a ring dinger. But one thing I will tell you is this. Um, you hear a lot of stories about the Green Wall and how they oppressed a lot of, uh, uh, you know, inmates or convicts that are incarcerated in California. Um, and just a lot of things that have went on, you know, elevator rides. You hear about rogue officers all the time, prison guards that uh, take it above and beyond the measures of what they're supposed to be doing. Now, they're supposed to be turning keys, not, you know, turning pedazos. There's, there's just certain situations where I've heard stories where, you know, they were pretty vicious. You know, the treacherousness uh, of prison in itself, you know, you have so much to deal with on a daily basis. The last thing you want to worry about is these blackers are going to come in and break, break your whole dome down, right? Uh, but it happens, you know, allegedly. Now, this group that I'm talking about, the Brotherhood of the Strong, now this was a factual group. This is the equivalent in different states to what would be considered the Green Wall. The new Green Wall. Are they? One never knows, does one. But the story goes like this. In Hawaii, you know, they have several correctional facilities. And there was an officer there that decided to start a clique. A gang, a group, a gaggle, um, some type of organization there called the Brotherhood of the Strong, to which they got a certain tattoo on their forearm or on their thigh, um, which symbolized their brotherhood. They're coming together. Now, this was a group of correctional officers, COs, that started this group, or this one guy did. Um, and, and it grew, you know, it grew in numbers, and they were pretty notorious. You know, everybody in Hawaii knew going into these correctional institutions or these prisons. Um, that not, not only did you have to deal with your enemies or people that you had did, you know, dirt with or did bad to, but you also had to worry about the brotherhood of the strong because for facts, they were there and they would take the initiative to introduce themselves to you. You know, it's just like any other place you roll up. All officers have different uh, ways they carry themselves. Some cool. They're just there to do their job. You know what I mean? Hey, someone will chop it up with you. You know, you're not supposed to fraternize with the canine. Man. You're not supposed to have you know, uh, uh, get real cool with them like that. But there's some that say good morning, good night. Um, they just try to keep it cordial. They try to keep a mutual respect there because it's better like that. If something does pop off and you're running and, and you see a black guy and he's like, this boss always gave me extra lunches or he was cool. He went ab above and beyond the measures that he had to or he was just righteous dude. You, you, um, it's going to make you think twice whether to put some steel in him or not. Um, and then you're going to run the other way to the bottle who burned you, took your, uh, messed up your cell and ripped your pictures, right? Um, and that's just such as life, um, the repercussions for your actions. Now, it's called karma. I said it's called karma. This vato um, decided that for no other reason in Hawaii, he would start this group. And they grew in numbers. They grew in numbers and they started to gain the attention not only of the convicts and the inmates that were there, because a lot of them were getting their heads split open, but they started to gain the attention of the internal investigation groups as well as the administration. And they started to, we're going hey, to ship them all out. We're going to break up this little gang, right? Um, because a gang is what they were. You know, they were um, a gang with supreme power, superiority. Um, when people have the gun, when people have the keys, and this is a prison situation, they control the prison. Ultimately, the inmates and the convicts will run the yards. But when it's all said and done, the police, the COs, whatever you want to call them, they control the prison. You know, they uh, will determine whether you come out of that cell or you go in that cell. And that's just the way it is. You know, uh, a lot of times being locked up, incarcerated in prison, we were always told they were short on staff. They were short on staff. So we maybe go hit the yard two, three times a week. I'm in certain places. We're talking level four, level three yards. I can't speak on level two. One's never been there. 
but I'm sure their programming is a lot more frequent. But as far as a level three and a level four, that's where it starts getting a little murky. That's where the 270 and the 180 buildings come into play. And they're able to separate people and they're able to just basically leave you in your cell for however long they want to. I mean, that's a form of punishment that no one should experience, but it happens daily. Um, it's probably happening right now. They might not have had yard today, you know, in certain places. Every prison is different, but every pr prison is in branching union, meaning they're ran, supposed to be ran the same way. Now, just like any other thing when it comes to gangs, it's all about the people that are in your gang. You could have a kickback clique, man, where everybody's cool, all good-ass homeboys. They're just trying to get by, make a little feria, do their thing. Um, they kick back. Then you could have a clique over here, they're riders, homie. They're putting in work. They're dusting people, they're allegedly. They're doing what they have to do or what they feel they have to do for their cause and their true belief system. Now, when it comes to the Brotherhood of the Strong, this group in Hawaii, they were running rampant and doing their thing and definitely tearing people up. Now, a lot of people haven't heard of this group. So they hit the mainland. They hit the United States and the first place that they touched down was Portland, Oregon, up in the Pacific Northwest. Now, having done time up in the Pacific Northwest, um, and once living there, no Bawosos, I said once living there. I said, I said, I did it once or twice. You know, I mean, I was up there. You know, my Hefita, my, my friends, my families, a lot of them were up there, you know. So I went up there um, and found myself living there from time to time. Now, I would be sitting here and remiss and a liar and a fat mouth if I told you I don't go up there from time to time to visit Familia. I show do. I said, I for surely do. I got friends up there. Should have got a kid up there. But one thing I will say is for sure um, is I took in a lot of what was going on in them county jails, having been to them. Now, Multnomah County Jail in Portland um, is probably the worst place I've ever been in my life. It's a big building located in downtown Portland, in the center of Portland. Um, and it was an ugly situation there, gente. Um, they starved you into a plea bargain. Um, the existence of living there was hopelessness, desolation. It was, uh, the, I wouldn't wish this place, I'd rather go to the shoe than go there. Put it like that. That's how bad it was. I, I seen bottles damn near breaking each other's heads open for a, a scoop of butter um, or a piece of bread. It was that bad. Um, the food was bland. There was not very much of it. Canteen consisted of some cookies and some chips. It was just a bad situation all the way around. Now, I haven't been there for years and years and years, but this was in the early 2000s um, when I made my presence felt. Now, um, there was a group there about the same time I was there, and I was hearing whispers of this group, and they were called the Brotherhood of the Strong. Now, this is the same a prison group or prison gang that started in Hawaii and found themselves, one of the main guys that started actually found himself working in Portland, Oregon. To which degree of working? Uh, he was about to work some uh, black guys' heads in. Um, for some reason, a lot of people were saying that they all had bald heads and they all had this tattoo and that they were a racial group that took a lot of their aggression and a lot of their emotions out on brothers, the Africano brothers, you know, the African-American brothers. Um, I don't know this to be true, but I do know that two people subsequently since all this happened were found dead in their cells and several more beat up. Now, upon this happening, the whispers were going around. I remember sitting in the county jail fighting a case and my cellie said, hey, have you ever heard of the Brotherhood of the Strong? I said, well, what was that? You know, to, to what degree of brotherhood are we talking here? Because this ain't Cali, right? He said, no, we're talking about a group of cops, sort of like the Green Wall in California. They're very rogue. Um, they're brash. Um, they believe they're above and beyond reproach, meaning that they believe they can't be stopped. Again, that's a superiority complex. You know, when you're the man, when you're put in a leadership position or you have uh, the Yavis or you're that one, you feel like no one can tell you nothing. All of a sudden, yeah, I'm going to do it. That's a ring dinger. You know what I mean? What you going to tell me? Guard! But when it's the guards doing it, now you're really in trouble, ain't it? Because now it's them versus you. See, it's always been them and us. You know, the cat and the dog. Bow, wow, wow. Yippee, yo, yippee. Why fuck that shit on me? Ain't no. You know the rest, right? Only Fresno, stand up. Pensa. So look, this is the way it goes. Um, when they're on the other side of that key, there's nothing you could do about it. If they want to pull you up out that cell and give you an elevator ride or take you on a long walk, um, you're going to have to roll that way. They're going to cuff you up out of that cell, out of that tray uh, slot, and bad things can happen to you. Fingers could go in places you don't want them to. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not supposed to be a pedazo. No, it wasn't a pedazo. <laughs> it was a... <laughs> and that's it. But anyway, so... What happened was this group's name was going around. I heard it a, a time or two, but I never visually seen it go on until one day uh, there was a young white kid that actually came into the building. Now, I had heard it was a racial group that their targets and most of the people that they ridiculed or picked on were brothers, right? Um, but where I was at, brothers weren't going out like that, man. Brothers would take that one-on-one -on -one fade with the cop. You know, I've seen many a times where, where the cop dropped the belt, went up in the cell and came out going on black eye like this. 
hurt, right? Brothers don't put it on them. Um, and then I've seen situations where uh, the brothers came out like, dude, all tore, or tore up and ice twisted looking like Debo. You know what I mean? What'd you say? What you got on my 40, Craig? <laughs> like I'm Debo, big bully, getting on some tough. <laughs> the boy, wrong homie to mess with, right? And uh, so I've seen it happen both ways. Um, but a lot of people were spooked of this brotherhood of the strong because at the end of the day, man, uh, bodies, you know, there was bodies. And what would happen is the same old love song, the same old thing that happens in a lot of prisons, a lot of places where uh, guards are involved, um, allegedly, is that allegedly these guys took themselves out or they did themselves in or they found them, you know, with sheets and things of that nature. I don't really want to say the word, but you know what I'm saying. Um, and that's what got written up and that's how it went, eh? And that's what it was, you know, guard, tell them. I ain't telling them nothing. I ain't no snake, right? Oh, okay, that's all. But that's just how it was. Now, I got to see this group because a young white guy came in. He was being a little rambunctious. He was, I think he was on a good one. You know, when in county jail, people come in, they're sleeping stuff off for three or four days. Uh, they've been running amok. They've been on a great one. Um, you know, whatever the case may be. So this kid comes in. He's a little rowdy. He's a little hyper. Um, they alleviated his hypertension. I seen three or four big white boys come in, um, all tatted down and, and did horrible things to this guy. Now, I say that to say this. At this time, I didn't know that was the brother of the strong until my celly brought it up and said, hey, that was the brotherhood of the strong, what you've seen. Um, a group of individuals, COs or correction officers um, that looked at themselves as a group or a gang, took pride in what they were doing. Now, again, this guy had come in and established from Hawaii. This was a group founded in Hawaii. So when he established, these guys took it to the next level. You know, you hit the mainland, you hit, you hit the United States, man, things change. Seasons change, yeah. Seasons definitely change there, and the wind blew a little bit too much. And one never knows, does one when one's head is going to be split open, does it? Um, but it definitely was happening. So I seen these guys do it. I said, "Whoa!" So that was them, and I did notice them with several tattoos. But I thought, you know, correction officers. Uh, my experience with them, especially being in the California Department of Corrections, locked up. You know, a lot of these black guys grow up the big Rocha, wear the lokes, they get all tatted. If they, hey, if you didn't know, and if they put on a prison uh, a jumpsuit or a prison uh, shirt. You would think that they were an OG from a barrio. You wouldn't even know they try to blend in or they start to uh, uh, em emulate emulate the convicts that are in there. They start to actually look like them. It's a trip. Um, they blend in. You know, they figure they're in prison. They're going to be in prison. Big old whips and lokes and, and Ray-Bans. And they're doing their thing. Hair slicked back or bald, all tatted on their heads. Yeah, I've seen correction officers with tattoos on their heads. Um, fully sleeved down. More tattoos than myself. Um, it's just what it is. You know, it's, it's, it's normal. Um, but these guys definitely were tied out. So I didn't think nothing of it. Um, I seen the guy get mollywhopped a little bit. They hit us, they hit him in the tally whacker, and that was that. Um, but I started to hear more about this group. Now, about the time I left and I was processed and went to prison, this individual or these individuals um started to become investigated. Investigated for a rogue group of cops that were actually hurting people, if not killing people allegedly. Um, now I know some of them were convicted, ultimately fired. Um, the guy, the main guy who actually brought it from Hawaii. Uh, was under investigation. I know that he got fired and got some time. I um, mean, they broke up their little gaggle or group. Um, but one never knows does one if there's still few that remain. Um, I hear about the green wall all the time. You know, it's spoke on quite frequently, not by a lot of prison YouTubers, but by people in general ask the question, what about the green wall? What about the green wall? Um, like I said, it's a group that I do know existed at one point in time. Do they still exist? I can't call it like an alcoholic. But from what I have heard from certain homeboys, um, they're, 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 they're up and running. You know, they've never uh, bowed down. They've never disappeared totally. That's just like any group or any gang, man. You might think that they're eradicated or they're no longer existing. A lot of authors take into other barrios or, or their barrio becomes defunct. You know, I do know like in the LA area, when Staples Center was built, it was built right on top of a barrio. Um, Clover, I, I believe, if I'm, if I'm correct, right? Um, right in a barrio or out of barrio. Um, doesn't mean the water doesn't exist anymore. It means the water is not there, but the bottles still exist. The mentality, the education, the klecha, the, 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 the getting down for what you believe in still believe is there, right? So I believe that these guys could have still spread their wings and flew. Um, I believe the Green Wall does actually, in fact, exist or existed at one point in time. Uh, but I've never had, um, I wouldn't say the, the uh, uh, you know, I've never ran into them. Thank God, because I don't need that smoke. God! We don't want that, man. Bang, bang. And in that fashion, let's take it old school. Uh, we just don't need that manual. But one thing I will tell you uh, for facts is that this Brotherhood of the Strong did exist. They did match up all their tattoos. They were all getting the same tattoo, which was an indication, an indicator. And basically, that's where they messed up. They got validated. 
You know what I mean? And that's how they do it. They validate you based on tattoos, who you hang around with, and certain other things that I will speak on. Um, and so basically they got validated, found out, and charged for a lot of these crimes. You know, a lot of people testified against them. Ugly situation. At the end of the day, you know, Brotherhood of the Strong, I felt I should speak on this group because it was definitely a group that was going on. Now, I can only speak on the West Coast. I don't know what's going on in the Midwest, you know, the Dirty South. Order the Dirty South, stand up. Uh, yeah, yeah, what's that for us? Everybody moved to the back of the bus. I don't know how they're outcasting people, but I know on the East Coast in different areas, I'm sure there's other groups. You know, if you guys know of any other groups, let me know so I can do a little research, maybe do a spill on it. Um, but for the most part, I like to do things on things I know about. Um, I was in the area and did hear about these guys. and did get to see them firsthand, um, but they did not approach me. As far as the, the Green Wall and the myth of them, um, from what I've heard from a lot of people is they are, in fact, uh, a dangerous group that you don't don't definitely want to get involved with or don't want to cross their uh, their path because uh, anybody can get it. That's the mentality. You know, you would think that a correction officer is just there to work and get that hundred to two hundred thousand dollar paycheck and all those all those uh you know things that they get. You know, the good medical and dental and oh my, I can see now. Um, but no, a lot of them are there and they start to play a role or fall into a role and all it takes is one or two guys to initiate something. And these guys, a lot of them want to emulate the gang members. They want to be, they want to be there, but they don't want to be there. Do you understand what I'm saying? A lot of these guys were um, ex-military, um, so they were part of a group or part of something, and they want to be part of something again and push a good a good agenda. But just like any good agenda, eventually over time, it gets watered down, twisted, and murky, right? And what happens? Let me tell you what happens. Vatals get out of their element, man, and they start to get aggressive instead of progressive. And that's just what that is. Anyways, with that being said, man, look into it. The Brotherhood of the Strong, they definitely were a group doing bad things to, to you know, I, I guess you could say bad people or maybe good people. At the end of the day, nobody deserves to be punished for being locked up. Being locked up is the punishment. Never forget that. With that being said, I hope that you move forward with a purpose. Hope that you get everything that you want coming to you. Remember at the end of the day, like that white kid that was getting his tallywhacker attacked, he was going, no, no. Ah! But they were saying, shut up. Shut up. It was crazy. I seen it for myself. I turned around and told myself, you're going to eat that piece of bread? He said, I'll trade you for the butter. Bang, bang. And it was like that. If you like this, please hit that like and subscribe with a thumbs up. If not, you can hit me with that thumbs down. That's the ring danger. You already know what it is. Heavy's going to be the head that wears this crown. I'm going to continue to strive and struggle for what I honestly and truly believe in. And that's something about the West Coast. Shh. Don't tell nobody. The gun. Bang, bang. And in that fashion.